So you got yourself an old radio, doesn't necessarily need to be a mobile, but it has display segments going out in it. And they'll be intermittent, and you know, you just jiggle the channel selector switch, and the digits come in, they go away. Some of the segments will be half illuminated, and they flicker. You get all kinds of weird oddball stuff. Now, what's causing that 99% of the time? Now, if a segment's just out, it never comes on, it's a good chance it's a bad display segment. If it's an older radio that had some of the uh, dip packaged or dual inline package, looks like an IC chip, but they're resistors. Some of the older radios, especially from like the 70s, it's not uncommon for those resistors, just the manufacturing process, those things actually start to come apart and they fail. But in radios like this, they use resistors as the drop, the actual uh, you know, axial leaded uh, resistors as the dropping resistors for these. So it's usually the segments are fine. If, if you see it flickering on and off, getting bright and dim, it's usually not those. The problem is this. The channel selector switch and uh, a lot of that has to do with how the radio was well not just stored but the environment it's been in if it's really humid got remember they're metal con it's a wafer switch it's just not like the wafer switch a lot of people are used to seeing where they're open where you can see the wafers they kind of enclosed them here which was a good idea because it makes it really hard for dirt to get in there uh, the problem is it makes it impossible to service these things because for starters you can see the, the plastic housing here originally just would have had four pins sticking out the back, and then they're melted melted on there. These are basically sealed, you know, never meant to be entered again. Um, so how do you get in there to clean that? Because, you know, all of your other controls here, when they get dirty, scratchy, you end up with problems. You can just grab your nifty can of deoxid spray, give them a quick squirt, rotate the control, or, you know, rotate the knob a few times, and they're fine. Well, you can't really do that with these because where in the hell does the cleaner go in? <laughs> There's no way to get into these blasted things. Well, actually, there is a way. Uh, now, is this the right way to fix it? Probably not, but it works just fine, and I've never had a problem doing it this way. It works just fine, and it's a lot cheaper than replacing this whole switch because, for starters, you have to find the switch. Um, if it's If it's a... For a more modern radio, you might be able to find it. But if it's an older radio, and these aren't made anymore, well, then your only option is finding one maybe out of an old a parts chassis. Well, even then, now you've got a used switch, and hell, it may be just as bad as the one you're replacing it with. So, what I want to show you is how to get cleaner into this switch. And what we're going to do is, is put a few holes in here. So, if you look at these things, you can see there's they're stacked. There's a piece, there's a piece, there's a piece, and there's a piece. So there's in this one, there's four little plastic sections. And then in between here, in, in between this one and in this switch, there's two wafers. There'll be one in between here and one in between here. But what we need to do is, is actually put some access holes in this thing. Now, once we're completely done with this, um, we can seal it back up so dirt can't get back into it. So... Now, what I use as a rotary tool, I'm using one that goes with my pace... Uh, you know, desoldering process machine, multi-process machine. You know, it just operates off a foot switch and variable speed. But uh, you can use a Dremel tool, anything. It's just a small carbide burr. You can see it's not very big. And what I do is, now here's the important part to doing this, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you don't want those plastic particles when you're boring holes into this thing. You don't want those plastic particles or anything getting down into the switch. You don't want to make matters worse. You're trying to repair it, not make it worse than it already is. So take your vacuum cleaner. And I'll take, and you can see here, this one's already done. So you can see there's a one, two, three holes, because this one has three wafer switches. But just hold your vacuum cleaner right there, you know, and come in with your rotary tool, and just bore down in and make three little access holes. And you can see, and I did this to show that there's nothing in the middle. I bored down in there just to show you that there's, because like I say, it's a plastic housing. There's a wafer down in there, and these are hollowed out. And there's another plastic wafer. And then these are flat on the back. So in between here, so it's every other, basically, line there is where you're going to be boring a hole. So for every wafer switch, there's two of these plastic sections. Because like I say, the, the wafers are trapped in between two of them. Then there's back-to-back -back plastic. 
Then there's a two plastic housings with a wafer trapped in the middle. Then there's another two back to back, and then there's another plastic or wafer trapped in between two plastic sections. So you want to bore down in there. But like I say, hold your vacuum cleaner right there. You want to have it really sucking up so any all that fuzz and you know contaminants you're making is being sucked up and out. And then once you're done, just hold this flat on there to make sure you vacuum out anything. Uh, now, like I say, this one was absolutely horrible. <laughs> I mean, it was, none of the segments were at full brightness whatsoever. And some channels, yeah, it was lucky if you could see anything at all. And all I did was, was bored those three holes, sprayed a squirt of deoxit into each of those little holes. I rotated the switch probably no more than four times, and you can see it works perfect. All of the display segments are at the same brightness. There's no flickering. There's no, you know, bouncing around where you jiggle the knob. They don't get brighter or dimmer. Works absolutely perfectly. And that doesn't take very long at all. Like I say, I bored three holes. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Spin, spin, spin. <laughs> You're done. Now, uh, you'll want to put something over top of that. You can put a piece. Now, of course, you've sprayed something like this in there. Now, I'll actually follow up. I'll let that dry out because I have to recap this radio, replace all the electrolytic capacitors, do an alignment on it. It needs some work done to it. So I'll let this dry out for a while. And then what I'll do is come back and give it a shot of deoxid shield um, to prevent corrosion. And that's also the shield is also a lubricant. But then, then I'll make sure I clean this off really good, this top surface with, a, with alcohol. And then you can either put a piece of tape over top of it. I don't know if I'd really recommend putting glue on there, because the problem with glue is you might squish the glue down in there, and yeah, then your switch is really going to be screwed up. But uh, like I say, if you clean it off really good with alcohol to make sure you get all that the you know the cleaner and any lubricant products off, so that's bare plastic, and then just put a piece of tape on there to environmentally seal that, so you, you don't have to worry about anything getting down in there. But it's so much faster. And, you know, if you're paying somebody to do this, this is a hell of a lot cheaper. Because to replace that, I'd have to take off the faceplate, take out this circuit board. And you have to remember, this switch has one wafer less than this one. So this one has, but you see all those pins on there. So this switch down here would have that many more. There'd be a whole nother two lines of, you know, so there's a lot of desoldering and soldering to do. It can be a, you know, kind of a tedious, time-consuming process. Where this right here, like I say, four or three holes, a shot of cleaner, and the switch is like new. And honestly, once you get done, once you've sprayed that deoxid shield down in there, these were assembled dry. Well, now you've actually added some lubrication in there. The switch will actually work better now than it did when it was brand new. So... There's just a tip on saving you some money and a fast way to do something that can be a labor-intensive process. Because, like I say, getting it out's one thing, but then there's a shitload of desoldering to do. And if you don't have, you know, vacuumated desoldering uh, equipment like this, if you're using desolder braid or there's little sucker ball irons, yeah, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but that that's a very, very time-consuming process. So there's just a fast way to get a channel selector... Uh, cleaned up so the digits work properly and like I say it, it'll probably last twice as long as it did when it was original new because now it actually has lubricant in there so I hope that little tip helps somebody out